Hello, everyone. My name is Tina Ada. I work in marketing for Hitachi America Limited, and I will also be serving as your moderator today. Welcome to our first 2021 webinar, Understanding Total Cost of Ownership of Inkjet Printers. We chose this topic today because we're seeing that many manufacturing companies are wanting to understand how the total cost of their equipment will affect their budget in 2021 and beyond. I'm excited to spend some time today with Linda Mangelsdorf, Senior Manager of Business Operations for Hitachi America Limited. I've worked with Linda Sun for several years and I have always been impressed with just the vast amount of not only financial expertise that Linda Sun brings to the table, but her ability to really help bring clarity and help people understand or break down different types of financial analysis techniques in simpler terms, which I am personally very grateful for. So welcome, Linda Sang. Thank you, Tina, very much. I'm very glad to be here today. And before we dive in, I'd like to go over some quick housekeeping items. First, just wanted to let everybody know that this webinar is being recorded and it will be available on demand. Uh, so you'll, you'll be able to review it again at a later time or please feel free to share with your colleagues if they were unable to attend today. Second, this is meant to be a discussion and we will be stopping throughout the webinar to answer questions. And so we are asking you to please type your questions into the Q&A box and we will answer as many as we can during this session. This box can be found on the bottom of the Zoom webinar window. And if there are any logistical issues, please use the chat box and we will try to resolve these issues as soon as possible. Last, this will be a 30 minute webinar, so we will be mindful of your time to stay within that window. So with all that being said, I'm very excited to discuss this topic because as we all know, 2020 was very challenging and a lot of people are looking at their budgets with a little bit of fear and a little bit of hope. And I think uh, having a strong understanding of total cost of ownership of different pieces of, of, of equipment on the production line will definitely help them kind of bring those two emotional elements together in order to make good business decisions. So my first question, Linda Sun, could you kind of start with the basics and tell us what total cost of ownership is and how it compares to another term I've actually heard pretty often, life cycle cost analysis? Absolutely, would love to. Uh, when you're considering to make an investment in new equipment or systems, there are many things to consider other than the initial purchase price that will impact your bottom line. This is when using life cycle cost analysis to understand the total cost of ownership becomes a useful tool to use before making your decisions about how to spend your resources. <clears throat> the terms total cost of ownership and life cycle cost analysis are frequently seen together and often are used interchangeably. But total cost of ownership or TCO refers to the sum of all costs incurred throughout the lifetime of owning or using an individual asset. The primary goal of TCO is to identify the hidden costs of buying a product or service that go beyond the initial purchase price. Life cycle cost analysis, sometimes referred to as LCC or LCCA, is a technique used to establish the total cost of ownership of competing alternatives and that assists management in the selection process. It can take into account any costs that the selection team feels are appropriate. Total cost of ownership and life cycle cost analysis enable decision makers to look at asset procurement in a more strategic way that's beyond the lowest bidder and to level the playing field when choosing among competitive bids where the lowest priced bid may or may not be the least costly asset to procure. Uh, next slide. Thank you. Typical costs often fall into one of five categories during the life cycle of an investment. The initial purchase costs, service costs, maintenance costs, operating costs, and disposal costs. However, don't limit yourself when developing your own list of potential costs. When preparing your calculations, use whatever criteria most accurately estimates the total cost of use and ownership of the product you're analyzing. 
the more life cycle costs you're able to include in your calculations, the broader your visibility will be when deciding between two or more alternative solutions. Next slide. So let's take a look at a life cycle cost analysis comparing the total cost of ownership for two competing pieces of equipment. So we can see how adding more elements to your TCO calculation will improve your decision-making process. In this first example, we start with three elements for TCO, the initial cost of purchase, maintenance costs over five years, and the cost of consumables over the same period. Total cost of ownership of equipment B is lower than equipment A, although its initial cost was twice as much. The difference in total cost of ownership is only $1,000 and may not be enough of a difference to sway your final decision. Next slide. In our second example, comparing the same two pieces of equipment, let's add the cost of estimated downtime and the operation costs to our TCO calculations. The estimated downtime and operation costs of equipment A will cost twice as much as equipment B. Now we can see clearly that although equipment B's initial cost was $10,000 greater than equipment A, over the lifespan of the equipment, the total cost of ownership is $51,000 less for equipment B. Next slide. Okay, so I think we're gonna take a break and just check in to see if anyone has any questions so far on that introduction. And Linda said that those examples are so helpful. It's really eye-opening to see the two costs compared next to each other like that. Mm -hmm. And again, we like to ask everyone to use the Q&A box feature as we'll be pulling questions from there. And I see a question now, Linda Sun. Okay. How do I know which cost should be included in my calculation, especially costs associated with operations costs? Mm -hmm. How into the weeds should one get? <laughs> well, costs are considered significant when they're substantial enough to cause a dependable impact on the project's or assets life cycle costs. Uh, they may be unique to an industry, to your company, um, or to a specific project that you're analyzing. Um, specifically, often people wonder if they should include operation costs or not, um, such as utilities, electricity, headcount personnel um, expenses. And my answer would be if the purchase or, or lease of this asset would impact those resources and you have that information available, then yes, I would include that in your calculation. Linda said, I actually wanted to ask you a question. I saw in your example that um, you had estimated downtime and operation costs that were included in the life cycle cost uh, analysis. But I wanted to ask you, are there other typical costs that might be considered that need to be considered? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, the, the list of potential costs really truly is endless and, and dependent on your unique situation. Um, however, a life cycle cost analysis might typically include implementation costs, uh, license fees, training costs um, for your personnel, costs of duplicated services during the installation process, uh, switching costs from the current brand to another, uh, mm -hmm. and changes to personnel headcount because of, of the asset. So, for example, you may be adding more headcount that needs training to operate new equipment, or you may be reassigning headcount because you're automating manual processes. Um, the more thorough your, your list of costs, the better your analysis to assist in the final decision-making process. Mm -hmm. and, and I would suggest that if you're not sure where to begin, uh, try looking at the five categories I mentioned earlier and list out all of the costs that you know of for that asset, uh, basically from cradle to grave, from purchase to disposal. Thank you. Well, it looks like we are not receiving any more questions as of now, so I'd like to uh, move forward. Great. Um, and I can really see the importance of TCO and how it can be a great tool to utilize. Um, but I like to zoom out a bit and ask you, where are some appropriate places to use TCO analysis? And are there any hidden ones that might not be 
so obvious. Absolutely. Uh, let's go to the next slide. Perfect segue into that. Uh, certainly, anytime you're considering a capital investment is a good time to apply life cycle cost analysis. These tools are useful when a project comes with multiple alternatives and all of them meet performance necessities, but they differ with regard to the initial and life cycle costs. In this case, the alternatives are compared to find one that can maximize savings. It's not always true that the less expensive initial cost has the lowest total financial impact. It may be the solution with a higher initial purchase cost proves to have lower lifetime costs. Using a life cycle cost analysis helps you understand the impact of both the initial and lifetime costs so your management can make the best decision for your organization. But that isn't the only time you should use these tools. Over time, economic conditions change that could significantly impact your operating costs of current systems or equipment, such as consumable prices, transportation costs, or personnel costs. If you find your ongoing operating costs of current systems or equipment are increasing beyond your initial expectations, you may wanna perform a life cycle cost analysis to compare alternative solutions. Also, using a total cost of ownership calculation to estimate lifetime costs of current and future capital equipment can assist you in preparing your budget plans to accurately reflect future expenses expected over the lifetime of the equipment. In such cases, it's recommended you indicate your figures are for planning purposes only, since actual figures may change between the time of your planning, planning cycle and the time of your actual purchase. Uh, there are many reasons to implement life cycle cost analysis to benefit your organization. Uh, first, it, it allows you to compare the impact of asset ownership versus leasing and can identify costs that have the potential to become burdensome over an extended period of time. It also allows you to analyze the impact of change and can help you justify switching products or suppliers. It supports the fact that the lowest purchase price does not always realize the most cost-effective result. When considering capital investments, it's a best practice to review multiple suppliers to make sure you're getting the best returns for your investment. Improving your return on investment can improve your margins and allow you to, to obtain the best value for your customers. Overall, using life cycle cost analysis to understand the total cost of ownership provides you with valuable data to support making the best decisions for your organization's investment. Next so slide. Linda, son, we actually had um, a question pop up. Are there mm -hmm. sheet guides uh, to use when calculating or presenting costs? Sure, yeah. Uh, certainly, um, if you go to Google and you Google uh, life cycle cost analysis worksheet or total cost of ownership worksheet, you'll be able to find many templates um, with, with recommendations. Um, some, there are some companies that offer them to purchase. I, I don't personally believe that you need to spend money to purchase that. Uh, I think just going to Google and looking that up um, will give you a good idea. Uh, in short, you, you wanna structure it in a way that makes sense to you. So again, I would generally start at the top and I would indicate um, what your initial costs are going to be. And then I would add into those um, all the subsequent costs through the life cycle uh, of the asset or the project that you're analyzing. Uh, you also, if you would like to, you can um, do it one of two ways. You can put everything in a column, say for the five year life cycle of that product and, and have that be a cumulative amount but you also could uh, break it out in columns left to right, um, you know, one column for each year so that then you can see the spread of how those costs will impact you over time. Wow, that's really great. So actually I just saw another question pop up. Is there a time when you would only use the TCO calculation or is it better to use TCO in combination with the LCCA? Absolutely, that's a great question. Uh, you would use the total cost of ownership alone if you wanted to understand the impact of potential costs associated with a single solution or a piece of equipment. 
The life cycle cost analysis is used when comparing multiple alternatives for solutions, such as comparing the total cost of ownership between multiple brands of printers. In this way, the two are usually tied together. And I find that really interesting because I've been under the impression that you had to use them in tandem. Mm -hmm. so I'm not sure if that's a, you know, maybe this could be a common misconception, but. Yeah, I think that uh, because the terms are frequently used interchangeably, um, there's a general understanding um, as to, to what you're trying to do. But in short, when you're analyzing or, or recording the costs of just a single unit, that is total cost of ownership for a single item. Um, and then anytime now you're comparing them one to another, that's when it sort of turns into life cycle cost analysis, right. because now you're analyzing one against another. So what, what about common mistakes? Have you seen any patterns or common mistakes that you've seen with using TCO? Absolutely. Um, there are a number of things you can do to avoid typical pitfalls when using life cycle cost analysis and total cost of ownership. Uh, I would recommend at the beginning of your process, establish a framework and define the assumptions you'll use and then apply them consistently during your analysis. You should also uh, be sure to perform your life cycle cost analysis during the initial stages of the design process while there's room to make changes that will ensure the life cycle cost is reduced. Uh, also, you wanna know who and what to include in your analysis. Uh, many cost factors are known to end users or to others in the organization, and they may not be known to purchasing. A complete picture of the total cost of ownership can be compiled through a team effort that includes at a minimum purchasing plus the end users, your technical experts and finance. Other departments may be included such as legal, production, supply management, transportation and import export, depending on the investment being made. The more diverse your team, the more useful your analysis will be. Also, the degree to which you can use relative versus absolute cost data should be defined as one of your starting assumptions. Determine if your organization will accept relative data, such as delivery performance measurements, as a valid cost factor, even though you may not know the exact cost of a missed delivery. If so, you can include relative data in your assumptions, but calculate both sets of factors, relative and absolute, and subtotal them separately so that the difference between each is clear. <clears throat> Sometimes it may seem okay to make assumptions about costs, particularly when you've become accustomed to working with particular brands over the years. It's important, however, to approach each analysis with fresh eyes and question the actual costs for current equipment. Although you may be satisfied with equipment you currently have, over the years, one brand's equipment may become more or less efficient and consume more or less resources as time goes on. It's important to include life cycle cost analysis and total cost of ownership as part of your standard best practices. Next slide. And Linda said, I'd like to just you know, take another minute and open up the floor again to answer questions from the attendees in regards to applying LCCA or TCO or common mistakes. And again, just another kind reminder, we ask that you use the Q&A box shown on the bottom of the webinar window. Uh, Linda Sam, we have a question here. What if you do not know all of the indirect costs? And, and that's fairly typical. Um, again, I, I go back to, um, you know, start it, start, at the beginning of your design process when you've got room to make changes and really work on developing a strong team. Uh, the more folks that you have on your team that are involved in this process, the, the broader your knowledge base. And so you may not have uh, knowledge of all of your operation costs, but someone from the operations group or the manufacturing group may have that for you. Um, so I would say include what you're able to get and if you're not sure, 
generally I would either not include it or I would subtotal it separately so that as you're presenting this information to your management, you're able to provide them with a concrete analysis and then um, also provide them with here are other factors that may impact um, the final decision making process. And I see another question. Um, I'm not sure if you have visibility and you may be able to help me a little bit more on this, but um, basically asking uh, if the related cost information are available for them to use in the LCCO calculation. And I think they're referring to uh, competitor fluid use maintenance requirements. Um, maybe just asking to step back a little bit and asking, uh, what should people be asking for maybe and who might be the best person to ask when looking for this information? Absolutely. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. I, I think as you're developing your, your list of costs, um, again, consumables is a big one that comes up, maintenance service plans. Um, as you're reaching out to your suppliers to uh, ask them to bid on your projects, uh, tell them that your expectation is that they will provide you with an estimated um, uh, consumables uh, use and what is the service schedule and what, what parts are to be expected and what are the costs associated with that. These are all typical standard questions that any supplier should be prepared to provide you. Um, so I would start in that regard um, and include those and um, yeah, I, I think that's the best way. And then also too, I think that's when um, setting up your life cycle cost analysis to display annual costs. Um, so let's say the lifetime of an equipment is five years. You know, you would, in your analysis, you'd have a column for each of the five years. Um, you can input your consumables for each year and then maintenance. So as an example, um, as your equipment ages, it may be expected that your maintenance costs are going to increase over time. So um, if you had you know, $1,000 the first year, it might be $2,000 by the last year. Uh, but these are all very typical questions that you should be able to um, ask of the suppliers bidding on your project and they should be able to provide that. Thank you so much. We'll keep this Q&A open for another few minutes or another 30 seconds or so to see if we have any more questions. And this is a 30 minute webinar. So I wanna make sure we stay mindful of everyone's time and stay within that window. Um, but I guess in order to wrap it all up, Linda Sun, if you had one quick piece of advice for our attendees uh, in regards to using total cost of ownership for analysis in 2021, what would that be? If there's one piece of advice or takeaway I'd like to leave everybody with, it would be to include the life cycle cost analysis as a key part of your best practices, your everyday best practices, and do it early in your design phase. If you do these things, you definitely will see the rewards from improved decision-making in your organization. Um, I, I cannot oversell that enough, honestly. That's, that's what I would give you guys as your key takeaway. Um, it's been my pleasure speaking with you all this afternoon, and I wanna thank you all very much for your time. Thank you so much, Linda Sun. This really has been an empowering discussion and I've personally definitely learned so much in the short amount of time and I'm sure our attendees have as well. Uh, it's really nice to also just be able to take a moment and spend time with you and learn an industry expert's point of view. So very, very thankful for that. Thank you very much. And to all our attendees, we are so glad you could attend this webinar. We have one quick request uh, before you log off, I'm putting up a survey on the screen and we wanted to ask you what you wanted to see in our next webinar and what the topic should be. So we'll give you a few moments uh, to vote on what topic you would like to see. And while we're waiting for the poll results, 
I wanted to remind everyone to stay on the lookout for an email sharing the recording of this webinar, which will also be available on demand. We'll also be creating a one pager that will provide some quick tips on TCO, so be on the lookout for that as well. I think we'll give a few more seconds and then we'll close out the poll and we can see the results. All right. And the results for the next webinar topic. is going to be selecting the best coding solution for your production problem. That's a great choice and we are looking forward to sharing our knowledge with you. Thank you again. And remember, Hitachi's knowledge is always there to help you succeed. I'm Tina Ada and thank you for joining.